I'm currently at the monastery of Panto Crater, which is the, uh, the highest point on the island of Corfu. Um, so I've crossed Greece and uh, yeah, getting the ferry across to Italy today. Um, and whilst I'm waiting for the clouds to, to reveal the view up here, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to go through the um, TCR uh, Q&A that I promised. Um, right, so uh, I've got some comments here. So Hans Peter has asked, in case you didn't mention it before, how do you train for events like the TCR? Um, so it's a difficult one, because it's such a long event. Uh, I did a preparation event called All Points North, which is um, the longest bit of training that I did prior to the TCR. And that was, um, I think, 600 miles, 1,000 kilometers around the north of England, um, starting in Sheffield and then up to the border of Scotland and back round. Um, and that was like about three days of riding over a, the Easter weekend. And that, that really set me up for um, learning a bit more about what a ultra distance race involves and uh, it helped in a, in a lot of ways because I made a, a few mistakes and things that uh, I put into practice for for the TCR later on. Um, but other than that you've just got to do long rides and I'd say do big days but don't do a huge amount of back to back because you'll just overtrain. Um, it's a difficult balance and I found that to, like in my training as well I'd put in a few like fast pace interval sessions and I'd, I'd be racing um, in the first part of the year as well so um, I just think building up your fitness generally and then the rest is just mental on a on such a long race um, so Max Thiersen, um apology if I wreck anyone's names um, has asked well, he's asked quite a few questions um, what would you change in your TCR kit um, in my kit, um, I was pretty happy with my setup. Um, I'd maybe, I probably wouldn't change anything in my kit setup as such, but I'd definitely make sure that I had stuff on that I was very comfortable with. So before before the this TCR, I uh, had a new saddle which is, um, I think it's an IMS, um, one of the uh, TT saddles. And I had new pedals and new, new cleats, um, which meant that my knee, knee fl flared up um, in the first um, day. So in the future, I'd, I'd make sure I'm, I'm very comfortable with my setup and have ridden with it lots. Uh, next question is from the same, uh, Max. Uh, Tips for people scared of bivying alone in Eastern Europe. Uh, I don't know, you just got to find a good spot um, and make sure you're not seen going to the spot. And Yeah, I've, I've never felt uncomfortable in that sense. But yeah, um, if there's this bears and wolves about, you've got to be a bit more picky of where you camp, I suppose, and making sure you've not got food with you. Well, food hanging from a tree or something. But, um, yeah, it's a difficult one. you just got to do it and overcome your fear. Uh, next question from Max is, tips for avoiding dangerous encounters with cars um, and trucks. Uh, you've just got to make sure that you're very well seen. You've got your, um, reflect yeah, you've got your reflective gear on. You've got plenty of lights on the back and the front. Um, yeah, you've just got to make sure everything you can do is to be seen and that you're riding um, in a sensible place on the road, not too far into the gutter and not too far into the road. And then <laughs> it's down to the trucks to give you enough room, really. Uh, uh, two more questions from Max. Um, how does TCR compare with your previous experiences on the bike? Um, it's basically just a... Uh, really intense uh, two weeks where you're experiencing a lot and you're just going huge distances over a very short amount of time so you're, you're seeing a lot and going through a lot of landscapes and yeah it's just a um, sensory overload I think whereas other times you're taking a bit more 
slowly and um, taking your time and it's a different experience going on with the touring I'm doing at the minute. I'm uh, stopping for lunch and uh, going for swims and yeah, taking my time a bit more, which is which is nice and I, li I like both. Both are different. Uh, and then his, his last question is opinion on race winners. Well, they're just extremely strong riders and um, chapeau to them. Uh, yeah, very strong. Uh, next questions are from Jake Jake. He says, well done on doing it. Massive kudos. How did you find filming it all? Um, so I've, I've filmed a lot of my adventures in the past and um, I enjoy making films. So it was kind of second nature to me. I did say in the um, initially that I wouldn't stop and put the camera on the ground and um, film myself going past, but I did occasionally put it on the ground when I went through some like spectacular scenery, especially like Dormitor National Park in Montenegro. But I think I was also really tired at that point, so I kind of wanted to rest, so I'd, I'd stop and put my camera on the ground and have a almost a little bit of a break. Um, um, continuing with Jake, Jake, um, when fatigued and feeling a bit mentally down, it must be tough to pull out the camera and try stirring some, um, stringing some sentences together. Do you find this, and if so, how do you overcome it? Um, because it's such a long like race and you're riding all the time, I find that you're always going to have something interesting to say at some point. So I don't, I don't force myself to get the camera out, but um, I just when it comes naturally to me and I think I've got something to say, then I, I record it then. Um, did you have an idea of what you are going to record before doing it? Um, was it fairly spontaneous? I'd say it's fairly spontaneous. I kind of don't put pressure on myself to make anything and um, if I feel like it, then I make a video. Uh, also, how much footage do you capture and how many SD cards or was most of it on the iPhone? Uh, most of the footage was on the iPhone. Um, I tend to use quite a lot of my footage. Not a lot of it goes to waste. Um, yeah, I use the GoPro sometimes and um, yeah, just mainly iPhone. So T.Y. McBride has asked, after these ultra events, do you see any increase in fitness? I'd assume no, because you are taking your body to the edge and recovery is limited. Uh, yeah, definitely. I've been very ill since um, finishing the TCR. I've been pretty run down um, and I'm still a bit under the weather. Robin um, Tienan has asked, um, how do you plan your route and what choices are being made that mean riders end up on different routes to each other? How do your route planning go compared to previous years? Um, and how do you tell the difference between tired and put if I push on I'll make better time and tired and if I stop and rest now I'll make better time later. So I use Komoot to plan my routes and I put a bit of time into route planning and try and make sure I'm on decent roads but inevitably um, I look for shortcuts and sometimes these shortcuts turn into gravel tracks or dirt roads that are not best suitable for um, road tyres. Um, so telling the difference between um, tyres, so I, I just, I made a few mistakes in the first couple of days. I think I pushed on too much and didn't sleep enough, which put me uh, fatigued for um, a little bit later on. But I just tend to ride until I'm tired and then if I find a, a good spot to take a nap, I, I take it and try and get a couple of hours of shut eye. Uh, Lorenzo Treveson has asked, how do you handle saddle sores and prevent joint injuries in this kind of long events? So it's pretty inevitable that you're going to get um, saddle sores at some point um, on, on a long event, such as the TCR. Uh, you've just got to use chamois cream and use cycling shorts that you um, are comfortable with. And then it's just all about persevering and just pushing through the pain. Uh, joint injuries. I, take, I took some ibuprofen gel with me and that helped when my um, knee was sore and then it's just about bike fit and having the, the correct um, position on the bike. Mark Williams has asked, when you were down with knee pain, 
how do you turn the negative feeling around and end up on um, such a high? So yeah, I was on the first first night. Um, I was very uh, almost ready to scratch at one point, but like uh, I didn't want to do that. I knew I wanted to finish. Um, but yeah, I had to mess around with my cleat position and put my saddle down. And luckily, it resolved the issue. But there was a, a few days there where I was just like struggling with my knee and. Um, yeah, I think it's just mental toughness um, for that one. Uh, Siddharth um, Kumar has asked, favourite part of the race for um, light bicycling and travel purposes? Um, I'd say Dermator National Park has got to be up there. That was pretty spectacular. And then Transalpina. Yeah, that was, that was amazing going up that climb. Uh, he says, also fitness routine for you to maintain such high levels of energy. Uh, just ride the bike and ride the bike some more. Um, Sean Owen, what would you do differently if you did it again? Um, uh, I'd probably try and sleep a little bit more in the, the first part of the race. Um, yeah, I was pretty happy with my performance and a um, few things to learn and take to future events. Uh, pickled Buffalo has asked, how do you manage your diet and avoid an upset stomach? Personally, I find food one of the most enjoyable parts of traveling. So I've definitely been tempted by all those street food and probably even eaten all the wrong things. Uh, so with the TCR, it's difficult to get a, a decent diet because you're basically running into gas stations and uh, stuffing your pockets with uh, packaged food and um, stuff like that. and energy gels and things that are just very quick uh, which is probably not the the healthiest thing to do but um, it's just time sensitive and then you'd stop for McDonald's and I'd have a couple of uh, falafel wraps in places if I could find a um, like a kebab shop or something they usually do falafel um, but yeah you're just burning such a um, huge amount of calories that you've just got to eat and eat a lot. Um, Burkhard Kloss has asked, um, can you explain how you did the, the route planning? So yeah, as I said before, all on commute. Um, I'd basically just put the start destination and the end destination and then put waypoints in between. And uh, then I'd play with it and put more waypoints in to make sure that it was the route that I desired and uh, was the the one that looked the fastest for me, um, which inevitably wasn't, and I could have done a lot better at route planning. Um, Player Sniper has asked, um, how was your mental state during the race? I feel like it ebbed and flowed. Um, you go through ups and downs, and you just, you've just got to ride the wave a little bit, and if you're feeling a bit down, you put your headphones in and listen to some music, um, to listen to some podcasts, some audiobooks, and then when you're feeling good, you can just ride without anything and just enjoy the scenery. Uh, Nick Nick uh, 194 has asked, um, How did you tolerate the creek? It must have been the hardest part of it all. Uh, yeah, it was frustrating. Um, but yeah, I thought it was the bottom bracket. It wasn't, it was the, the um, rear mech hanger, which I've found out recently and just needed tightening, so could have easily fixed that, but you never know. Um, Ashley has asked, um, what mechanicals did you have during the ride? I was very um, fortunate and didn't have many mechanicals at all. I uh, had a one puncture in Germany and I fixed it with a plug and then no punctures since and touch wood um, that I don't get any uh, on my way to Spain. Uh, Fred, Dibnar has asked, a financial breakdown would be interesting. Um, so I spent around just shy of 500 euros um, on the whole of the transcontinental um, during the race. Just And that's a, it's a lot of money spending gas stations. But I suppose um, I've, I've heard of other riders who spent more, so I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Um, Alan McEwen has asked, 
knowing what you know now, what are the three main things you would do differently? Um, sleep more at the start. I would make sure my kit is bang on and that I've um, ridden it um, previously and not rushed into getting new stuff prior to the event. Um, then the third one, I'll, I'll, I'll think of something. <laughs> I can't think of something off the top of my head right now. Um, Silver Muhayina has asked, how many calories were you consuming and what did you eat? Um, no idea how many calories I was burning each day, but it would have been a lot. Um, I started off with uh, a lot of things in my pocket. So I had bananas, um, energy gels. I had uh, Luchos um, um, energy products which are banana leaf wrapped um, Colombian um, uh, treats, which are uh, really good. Um, which I really like was the, the banana leaf and you can just um, take the wrapping off and chuck it at the side of the road and it's decomposable. Um, and then basically just gas station food, crisps, restaurants along the way. And then in Italy, I did have a, a pizza, which was nice because I wanted to rest my knee. Um, yeah. Didn't stop down for stop for too many sit down meals apart from that time in Italy, and the rest was just eating at gas stations and fast food places. Um, right, Shino Abraham has um, asked, "How do you get through the navigate the foreign countries when the signs could be in Chinese and Arabic scripts?" Um, so when I've got for this trip. I had Kamut and um, had all my maps on on a on a Wahoo um, on a Wahoo Rome, so I didn't really have to worry about navigating by street signs so much. But um, yeah, you can always download maps um, on your phone as well on a, using an app called Maps.me, and uh, yeah, then just navigate using that. Um, Servin Vukel has asked. What did you take um, that you never used and would would you take it again? So the, yeah, there's lots of tools that I, I didn't use and um, uh, I had took a, a rear mech, spare rear mech hanger and um, spare cleats and all that sort of thing, but you never know what's gonna go wrong on a trip. So yeah, I'd take it all again. Uh, David Doherty has asked, um, how do you like the giant revolt? Uh, really like the Giant Revolt. Um, used it for all my trips now, really. Uh, even from coming back from China and then this one. And it's just a really versatile bike. You can put gravel tires on it and do a gravel race that I'm going to in Spain. And um, you can put road tires and do the, the TCR. So, and, and it's really comfortable. Um, I was comfortable the whole time on, on the race. Uh, Alex Turner has asked, what was the creak in the videos coming from? And yeah, that was from the um, rear mech hanger not being tight. Um, Superfluous has asked, how much did you spend? Yeah, just 500 euros uh, for the, the 12 days of racing. And then Roman Vumulan has asked, how much sleep did you get? So for the first um, two nights, so it started at 10 p.m on the on the um first night so didn't didn't sleep the first night didn't sleep the second night had about a 20 minute nap on the second day and then three hours at the first checkpoint um which was much needed and then then i slept more consistently after that and had one one night in romania where i overslept and um slept through my alarm and didn't wake up till seven and had about um, six, seven hours sleep. And I was very lucky to wake up at that point. It was, uh, I only just made the ferry across from Romania to Bulgaria. So, um, that was a, a tight, tight cut in that one. Um, Nob Gross has asked, um, do any hotels and B&Bs refuse bikes and rooms? So I've never really had an issue with this. And I've always just put my bike on my shoulder and said it's my back, uh, it's my baggage, and um, it's all my luggage, and just take it to the room. And 
they usually don't bat an eyelid or if, if they do have a problem with it they usually have a room that they um, can store your bike in but since finishing the TCR in um, Sofia I had a, a bit of an interesting experience in a, in a hostel where they downright have refused to let me keep my bike in the room or anywhere in the hostel they said it's got to be outside and because it's an expensive bike I don't want to do that um, and they were going to kick me out of the and the, uh, the hostel and I basically said it was like one o'clock in the morning at this point and um, I said if I if I go out now I'm gonna be sleeping on the streets which I can do I'm I'm not um, too too worried about that but um, they eventually let me keep my bike in the room um, and said it was a, a one-off but um, that was a, a weird experience and usually it's fine keeping your bike in your room but yeah hope you've enjoyed the Q&A and um, let me know if anyone else has any more questions. Thank you.